You're watching Swipe. Here's what we've got for you on this week's show. An aerial revolution in farming. Angela's looking at the robots that could join the workforce in the field. Meanwhile, world famous supermodel Natalia Vodianova tells me what it feels like to jump from fashion to tech. And you've waited nearly 10 years for it, but finally, The Last Guardian has arrived. Hello and welcome to the Copper Box Arena in London. This place was one of the Olympic sites in 2012. This week, though, it's hosting technology fans for TechCrunch Disrupt London 2016. Think of it as a big event for entrepreneurs, speakers, investors, and a world-famous model, as it turns out. We'll have more on that later, because first, we're headed to the farm with Angela. She's been looking at the technology making farming more efficient. Traditional farming is changing. Tending to livestock and growing crops could soon be the job of robots. That's according to engineering staff at Harper Adams University. They're adapting farm machinery to create autonomous alternatives to do time-consuming tasks. Self-driving tractors and robotic harvesting systems are just a couple of concepts well underway. Well, these new machines can be made so that they carry out these tasks a lot more efficiently than we do at the moment. Uh, right now we spread fertiliser over the whole field and chemicals uh, that are going off target. But with these new machines we can be able to do what I call intelligently targeted inputs. So it's a lot more accurate and a lot more efficient than the current practices. This drone is being tested to see how it can be used to spray crops. The engineers say the advantage of this is greater precision and avoiding damage to the crops by flying over them instead of driving over them. And here is another idea in development to protect crops. Researchers at Liverpool John Moores University are working on a project which uses high power lasers to keep pests away. They say the fence of laser light will provide an alternative to poison. Some of the companies behind the new technologies think the robots will do a better job of quality control, but those in the field think the human element will always be needed and the cost of the machinery also out of reach for some businesses. It's, it's a very exciting time to be involved in farming. Um, I still think there is a massive role for, for the actual farmer, for the hands-on farmer, the, the decision-making part of the job. There's no two farms in England that are the same. And, and there's this, so every single farm is different. So I think different farmers can embrace technology in different ways. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's going to be a blanket rollout of, of all technology. Research from various universities and think tanks predict that around 11 million jobs in the UK are at risk of automation. For some, the transition to full autonomy is already in progress. But for others, the idea of taking the farmer out of the field is still a little far-fetched. Angela Barnes, Sky News. Stay with us, still to come. Supermodel Natalia Vodianova, also known as Supernova, will be telling me how she's creating a new kind of social currency. That's coming right up after a roundup of this week's tech news. It seems the tech industry still has a problem with sexism. A survey by Sky News and online magazine The Pool of more than 500 women working in the sector found 39% believed they'd been denied a significant opportunity at work because of their gender. Microsoft, Twitter, Facebook and Google's YouTube are joining forces to help stop the spread of terrorist propaganda online. They're creating a type of digital database and say their plan could stop videos that are blocked on one platform from then appearing on another. Virgin Galactic has completed a successful test flight of its new spaceship, VSS Unity. It comes more than two years after the company's predecessor spacecraft broke apart and crashed in the Mojave Desert in Southern California, killing a co-pilot. And a US-based biotech company has developed a special kind of gun it says can spray a person's own stem cells onto severe burns so their skin can heal itself. Renovacare claims the skin gun technology has successfully treated more than 40 patients in tests so far. It could one day offer an alternative to traditional and painful skin grafting. Stick around for our games review. It's all going off in the kitchen. But first... 
Now this section of the event is called Startup Alley. It's full of entrepreneurs showcasing their ideas and their apps and their products, including supermodel Natalia Vodianova. You were expecting us. Hello. Talk to us about your app that you launched. Well, LB is a platform and an app. Uh, so we bring the power of social and digital to charities and brands. It allows uh, people around the world, and especially young audience who we are focusing on, to, uh, to do something good daily. So it's an app that's promoting good deeds. Yes, exactly. Well, I've heard you say that this is a, a new kind of social currency. So is it reward-based charity giving? Whether I donate, what I create, what I share, I get one point and that grows my score and that score also turns into social currency. So it turns into actual coins that then you can spend in the love shop. So love shop is the first uh, online retail space where you can literally shop with love. I'm interested to know what your first impressions of the tech industry were when you began working in app development. Well, it's very expensive, it's my first <laughs> impression, and very competitive space. So it's very difficult to, uh, to find really good developers. Has this project been very challenging for you to jump from modeling, from fashion, into tech? Well, into tech, yes, because it's a very new field for me, but into world of philanthropy, no, because I, I started uh, my own charity organization 12 years ago. So I know really inside out what, it's, what the charity needs. Has being famous been a hindrance at all? Because a lot of people might say that it's an advantage because you can have celebrity backing with your product. But have you found that to be true or have you found that it's worked against you? Sometimes it works. Uh, it, it's, it's a good thing. But actually it's, it can be um, an obstacle because people, especially being you know, a woman and, and, and also a model and being in the fashion industry that is supposed to be very frivolous, uh, you know, I, 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 it's difficult to prove that you are very, very serious about it. How, how have you found being a woman? I know it's hard to compare because we've never been men. It definitely brings attention, but then, um, you know, for good or for bad, I'm just trying to do absolute my best, but I do find that, that it's, um, it's, it's difficult. Now, time for this week's games review, where Chris has been busy wiping out zombies and creating culinary havoc, just for us. Dead Rising 4 takes place in the town from the original Dead Rising. It has the character from the original Dead Rising, Frank West, who's back in Willamette. If you've not played a Dead Rising game before, and you own an Xbox, I don't know how you've avoided this, but basically, he's a photojournalist who's covered wars, you know. <laughs> Anyone who's played it before will get that. It's very hilarious. But he goes around dispatching hordes of zombies in ridiculous, crazy, inventive ways. It would take a Christmas miracle for old Frank to survive. Like, in this one, you can fire a gun that fires fireworks everywhere. Or there's a giant mech suit that he can get in. It runs out of juice eventually, but it's still pretty ridiculous when you're you see like 100 zombies have just been like dispatched by you just stamping onto the ground that's pretty fun and that's the gist of the game just go around and get rid of as many zombies as you can there's a plot and characters and all that stuff but it's not really the main focus of this game let the sleigh ride begin <laughs> The Last Guardian is a game that had almost become vaporware, which is a term that basically means a game that's never going to come out. And now it's out on the PlayStation 4. It exists. And it's as amazing and stunning and beautiful as everything you'd sort of hoped for in all that time. You play a young boy who hangs around with a giant man-eating monster called Trico, who's also ridiculously cute and looks like a cat bird. He's, what you do is you have to solve problems and move forward, essentially. It's a beautiful, stunning world. But the gist of it is, how do I keep progressing with this giant beast like, that's now my friend? And you get to know the beast as you go along, 
and you both become friends. Overcooked is unquestionably the best couch co-op game this year, and they're releasing a free update. A free update that brings in holiday stuff. So you can play as a reindeer. There's eight new levels that you can play through and a cool new way to cook, which is a flamethrower. What you do, you and a group of friends get together and you create food. You're all chefs. Ideally, four of you would be playing all in the same room. It's the first time I think I've ever fully appreciated why chefs run their kitchens like a military organization. Like, that always seemed weird to me when they're like, yes, chef, and running around. I was like, come on, I've made dinner. It's not that hard. But then you just try playing this game and it's ridiculous, you end up shouting at your friends, being like, I need tomatoes now, why have you not chopped the tomatoes? They should be there, we have a system. That's it from us here at TechCrunch Disrupt London. We'll be back next week, hope you can join us then. But in the meantime, you can watch any of our Swipe episodes on our YouTube playlist. Just type in Sky News Swipe and stay up to date with all the latest tech stories throughout the week on Sky News on mobile, tablet, catch up, SkyQ and Snapchat. We're everywhere. See you soon, bye bye.